What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Justin Ford Podcast, where I'll be releasing life-changing principles and valuable information focused on all things faith, finance, family, fitness, real estate, and so much more. Let's go! What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Justin Ford Unleashed podcast. Super excited to be with you here again today. Hopefully, you've been doing great since the last episode. If you're tuning in for the first time, super excited to have you. If you're loving the show, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. You can also subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. And if you're really loving the show, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. We always love to hear your feedback. And if you haven't followed me yet on social media, you can at the official Justin Ford. Again, at the official Justin Ford. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, and also on YouTube. Got another great episode in store for you today. Uh, But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you that this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they lived next door. The founders and team members have more than 150 years of combined experience helping clients all over the country choose the best loan program to help you accomplish your goals. Nextdoor Lending is currently licensed in over 23 states and has a team of over 100 loan officers specializing in helping you get the best rate and terms. Whether you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your next home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888 885-3667 885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Got another guest in the studio today. She's ap- actually my favorite guest and you're not even really a guest. She's my co-host for our real raw and uncut uncut segment. My beautiful <laughs> wife Joy Ford. Yes, I am. Welcome co-host. back. What is it? Twice a week we, we I haven't I haven't seen you since this morning. Good to see you again. <laughs> I just want to make sure you can speak today. You're okay you know, with your words? We're good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little I stumble over my words. It's okay. I know how to pick I it back up. I love it. I love when you stumble, especially if you're speaking somewhere. <laughs> I just laugh inside and then like we talk about it later. But it's real raw and uncut. I know, it's the best part. I don't have it all. Never know what's gonna come out. Right, you just never know. We don't even know what's going to come out today. We just show up and make it happen. Well, we know what's coming up. No, absolutely. We talk and so about things we plan, we strategize. Yeah, a few minutes before the show. No, well, last night you went to dinner. Hello. Oh, we did. I know. No, but you know, it's it's. I always go best off of not being scripted. You know, and even when I and sp- I don't. Well, I know we're different, but even <laughs> when I spoke the other day, I was speaking up in Saginaw to a group of. 16 to 24 year olds, I was asked to speak for Michigan Works. Michigan Works is an organization here in Michigan that helps, you know, people who are either unemployed, people who are considered, you know, um, troubled, you know, Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever it may be. And uh, they actually had me speak. This is the third time in the last 10 years. And Tyler was going with me. So my nephew, Tyler, and he's like, what are you going to speak about? I said, I don't know yet. And we're like in the car on the way there. But what's interesting is when I get a few minutes to think about what do I want to say and I just kind of pull a few things together, he was laughing on the way out of the, because it was a two-hour talk. It wasn't an hour. It was a hmm. two-hour talk. Really? And wow. he was laughing as we went into the parking lot. And he says, how did you do that? How do you just spit out stuff? How did you just you speak just, for two hours? And that. he said, it was so good. And, hmm. and here's what I say is like, when when you have a message or when you have something to share, you just have to articulate it and share it. Like even when I've been asked to preach at a church, you know, some pastors, and I think it's great, will study for a month to, to share something at church. And I'm yeah. like, I'm usually best. Even when I spoke at the, the you know, the Glover U retreat a few weeks ago is I, I put, I, I, well, within 48 hours of Mm -hmm. me speaking and Mm -hmm. because it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just kind of how I prepared. So, so even preparing for these shows, it's like, what are we going to talk about? Because I want it to be relevant. I don't want it to be scripted. I want it to be powerful. And so, Mm -hmm. and, um, happy 4th of July month. Yeah. It's coming. I mean, you know, we're we're in the month of July. It's it's already July. 
or summer. Well, it's, summer. Pa- it's past Fourth of July, but it's yeah, already but it's the month of July, and I feel like summer is flying by, and we're dealing with this like smoke in the air, and like, I'm like, where is the sun? I want to be at the pool, and this craziness is happening. Yeah, and 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 we're actually heading to Montreal, which I is know. pretty exciting. Ooh. And I had to double check. I'm like, hey guys, you guys okay over there at the fires? Are yeah, you really dealing with some smoke over there. We go- should we still come? Yeah, they're like it's fine over here. Yeah, they're like, they're blowing it up in the news. It's not really as bad as they say it is. So I'm excited to go have a beaver tail. Yeah. yeah. And my kid and the kids are too. Yeah, every we, kind, every flavor. Yeah, we've been going to Montreal for the last, over t- I think 10 Since years. Since Judah was born. Actually, I think the year he was born, he was six, six months. And I was ten years. crazy to do a 10 hour trip. It's, it's been 10 months. years. This will be our 10th year oh going. Not We missed a we few missed years. We haven't, been, well, we haven't mm-hmm. been there in four years. Four. 2019. Was when we were last there. Yeah. Because are COVID. you counting nineteen then? No. So if you like look 20, at so if you go 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 Yeah, nine. And these are like our family like friends. Family friends. We yeah, love like, our Montreal family, and we've gone before COVID. We went year every year consistently for one week of the of the summer, and I always uh, speak at the church up there. So Pastor Alex already asked me, says Justin, I want you to speak when you come up. So I'm looking forward to that. But mm-hmm. that's one of our our favorite weeks of the year. And what's awesome mm-hmm. is all of our kids, they, they love it. They, they can't wait. Love it. I know. I think it's because it's so homely, and like we have barbecues and we swim and we go, go to like stuff. we go to like, like an um, amusement park. We went canoeing in the mountains at one time, yeah, that which was, was beautiful. so awesome. Which took. <laughs> Huh? It was a long canoe trip. Yeah, because you go all the way to the top and you go all the way down, and it was like I think three hours. It was a long most day, beautiful, but it was beautiful. Mo- most beautiful. The views kids ever. were like, "Are we almost done?" I'm like, "No, I it, don't it, know." It was. It was like it was a, like a movie. It was like a it surreal, was. like a postcard. It was yeah, so beautiful. It was, it was so nice. I think yeah. I got like 50 million mosquito bites. I had oh, yeah. no idea they were going to be so bad. The mosquitoes. <laughs> so we're we're a blended family. So me and Angelina, we're white. <laughs> Well, Joy, the kids are too. Well, Joy's <laughs> brown and Emilio's I'm brown. I'm Mexican and Filipino. I but you're it. brown. So, okay. So we could say, okay, I'm, I'm European descent. You're Mexican, <laughs> Filipino, but your skin is brown. Mine is white. Yeah. Emilio's they, is brown. Tierra's is gold. And Judah and, um, uh, and uh, Tierra yeah. are golden. But me and me and Angelina's skin is white. But yeah, what's yeah. crazy is when we're always out there, the mosquitoes always Only attack get the me brown. And Emilio. They always attack the brown we skin. We come out of there with like body full of mosquito bites and they're like we have none i think they just like the spiciness that you guys yeah bring. i always i know they i like always the say caliente they like the skin, spicy the brown spicy skin blood. yeah i don't know yeah it's funny but anyways that's that's yeah but <laughs> and that's anywhere we go they anywhere get the mosquito we bites we don't so and i can put all the mosquito spray like i can dip into a mosquito spray bucket and like they it makes it worse i don't yeah. even know they always get you. They do. That's why if I'm ever going to be in an area where I know there's mosquitoes, I always want Joy and Amelia around because it's like they're <laughs> like mosquito they repellents. Say, yeah. <laughs> Go stay they keep the, they keep the mosquitoes away. It's funny. Um, but on a on a serious note, you know, uh, we we had the opportunity. It was it was pretty powerful. We were we were at the Glover U mm-hmm. retreat a couple of weeks ago, and we got to hear Ed Milet speak. And if you guys don't know who Ed Milet is, he is a top entrepreneur he's mm-hmm. got a top podcast that you should definitely check out and i've heard all of these great things about ed and he was announced when in january because our our conferences that we do at glover U, we have the the sun or the uh, the summit in january and then the retreat in the summer and then at the summit in january we announced ed Milet, mm-hmm. and so we knew he was coming and then what was funny was then Keller Williams announced Ed Milet as their keynote speaker. And then EXP announced Ed Milet as their keynote speaker. And I'm like, wow, I think the greatest form of flattery is um, copying somebody else or something they say. Or they're just the, the speaker of the year. I don't know. No, well, no. So we were the first ones to actually oh, really? book. I was yeah, like, we found the, out. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, regardless. Anyways. So I was at the EXP conference back in May mm-hmm. and Ed Milet was the speaker there. I remember. And I personally did not listen to him speak. He walked out. No, Did no, I just have a didn't. snack with me or something. No, you weren't there. You weren't at shareholders there. in Orlando. Yes, because me and Amy hung out. Remember you, your back started acting up. Oh wait, did oh yeah, that's right. You flew down with. Did you come with me or you came separate? I don't remember. You flew down separate. That's I what flew it was. Separate, yeah. yeah, but yeah. So you weren't at the conference. No, you, no, you only no, come you to sit come by out. the pool. You don't actually come to actually go to the conference. Now that I'm licensed, well, Glover, you. I well, Glover, you. Do you do? But EXP, she comes for the pool. That's it. <laughs> 
EXP. So anyways, <laughs> um, but I purposely didn't go into the conference yeah. to listen to him because I wanted it to, to be at the Glover U conference. Yeah, like a surprise. Like, yeah, I wanted it to be, like, first. I didn't want to hear it the second time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I heard all, a bunch of great things and I heard all this feedback, but I was blown away by by his message. I could not believe what I was listening to. I'm like, is this is a fake story? This is crazy. Yeah. And he is who he is. And he went through all of that. Holy crap. Yeah. I don't know what to expect. Actually, he seemed like one of those rough around the edge, like, you know, motivational yeller speakers. Like, yeah. But the way he gave his story was powerful. very powerful. It was very, like, I don't know. It's, like, weird to say, like, peaceful, like, heart, very from the heart. From the heart, yeah. Yeah, and he wasn't No, yelling. he spoke. It was it was very authentic. Mm-hmm. And but, but the one thing we wanted to talk about today, which, you know, I think is important for those that are listening, is, you know, Ed talked about, the, the, the trauma that he experienced. And he, and he talked about, you know, that as, as individuals, we all experience hardship. We all experience tough times. We all experience difficulties. And he said, how, how long are you able to endure pain? And, and it was, it was really powerful because what I loved about Ed's message is Everybody in that crowd related to him because he spoke from from human terms that we mm-hmm. all experience pain in life. We all right. experience different things in life. But what he talked about was that really hit me is breaking the generational curse and being the one, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I know that everybody listening right not not everybody listening right now comes from a place of trauma, comes from a place of you know, um, a a house that was, you know, out of order or had issues or, or any of those things, because some people were, were fortunate and blessed to be raised in a great home, have great parents who led you, taught you Mm -hmm. and, you know, led you down this path, which is amazing because I think Mm -hmm. that's what parents are designed to do, but not everybody had the opportunity to be raised in a home that was, you know, a great home, right? Right. Dysfunction is very common in today's world. And what Ed was talking about was, is how he grew up in a dysfunctional home. His dad was an alcoholic. You know, he had a very tough upbringing. You know, his dad would beat him, you know, yeah, when he five years old, five years old would, would like, whoop him and beat him, you know, or he would have to keep him from coming home or when he came home he, he would, would have, have to like keep him busy to not want to drink more or go find his mom and wife siblings. to, to yeah. beat them yeah so his, he would keep him busy he yeah. would keep the dad busy at five years old like asking questions and yep so he he would have his mom go upstairs and his mm-hmm. his sister. baby sister go upstairs mm-hmm. and he would go downstairs knowing when his dad was coming home right. to mm-hmm. you know keep him occupied right. so that you know he wouldn't uh beat his mom or so, so oftentimes he'd get whooped and he Mm. just said how he grew up and just uh, experienced a lot of trauma going, uh, uh, growing up, had a lot of different things that took place in his life and, and how that there came a moment in his life where he realized that he didn't have to continue down that path. He didn't have to, you know, continue the cycle of dysfunction or trauma or -hmm. addiction in his life. And, you know, he had talked about how, you know, generational curses pass through generations. Mm -hmm. We don't a lot of times think this way and you may have never even heard the word generational curse unless maybe you're a Christian because we talk about that and Mm -hmm. the Bible talks about that. But, but understanding that there are things that travel, you know, through the, the, the lineage of people's families that gets carried down Mm -hmm. into generations that Ed said, be the one who breaks Breaks. that cycle. Mm -hmm. Be the one who all the trauma, all the pain, all the dysfunction stops with you. Right. And he said in every family, there comes one Mm -hmm. that shows up and breaks that curse and stops the dysfunction and creates a new trajectory moving forward. Right. That hit me hard. It was, it was huge. It was huge. And and it hit me hard be, and I I began to like cry. Well, yeah, everybody was crying. But I began to cry because all the pain that I've gone through and all the hardship that I've gone through and all the struggle that I've gone through, I realized that it had to stop with me. Right. And if mm-hmm. it stopped with me, then then 
our kids, which I see Tierra, mm-hmm. I see Judah, mm-hmm. Angelina, Emilio, like we've created a different path forward for them. Mm-hmm. What was, mm-hmm. I mean, cause I know you were crying too. And I know you had some feedback after you had heard that from me. Like what, 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 what did you feel like your takeaways were what God was speaking to you about his message for us? I love when you ask a deep question. I wish I brought my notes for one because I. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I, I don't mean, always remember everything. Like my, I literally laugh because, not to deter them the question, but like years ago, I got in a car accident. And I hit my head and I blacked out and and I laugh because I'm like Justin. I really think I have a bad short term memory. He's like, no, you don't. You don't. So sometimes he'll ask a question and like minutes later I forget. I'm like, what did he just ask? And I honestly. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. I took a lot you, away you from Ed. That. I took a lot away from Ed's um, being the one, but um, I just, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm the one. Yeah. You know, and I think that there was, you know, many people that were the one in my life to help me along the path. Yeah. Um, you know, we going through some marriage difficulties, and I had a mentor, um, yep. Amy Rennie, who was the one for me. Right. Um, she was the one that helped lead, hold my hand throughout through all of it, yeah. through all the chaos. So I look, I, I, I look at, I listened to him and I looked at that as who is the one in my life that yeah. helped me, um, break those things. Right. So. Yeah. Cause there's people that come along the way to, cause you can't do it alone. No. And, and Ed even referenced a lot of people that came along his path, but you know, a lot of times when we're experiencing dysfunction or we were raised in dysfunction or we were raised in trauma we have a choice. Mm-hmm. We can continue mm-hmm. in that trauma. We can continue in that dysfunction. Or if we have, and this is what he said, if you have just one more day, one more minute, yeah. one more mm-hmm. opportunity, you know, you, you can be the change. And, and, and being and the really one, when we say like, when he said like being the one, I don't see it as one person, like physically. That's why I was thinking of, you know, people that came into my life when we first got married and going through all the hardships and who, who each one were the one that made really that came down into the one. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it An definitely love people. Yeah. People. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, I've, I'm not, that's, ashamed. How I, that's what I got out of it. Sorry. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed to, to share it. And I share it when I speak, like I, I, I have a counselor that I meet with every two weeks. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think when people hear someone meeting with a counselor, they automatically assume, well, they have problems no. or whatever. We all have problems. We all, we have, all have, problems. have things, you know, that we have going on. And what mm-hmm. I find you know, with having my counselor is this is a trained person that I can go to and I mm-hmm. can share specific things with. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he has answers that, that can help me. And I right. remember, gosh, I was, I was with him, you know, not too long ago. And I was, I was sharing specific things of my story and my journey as a kid. And he's like, Justin, like he almost started crying. Cause when I was sharing my story with him, he's like, you've been through so much trauma and so much pain right. that a lot of that stuff that you experienced has not been healed yet, mm-hmm. has not been dealt with yet. Because when we're little kids and things happen to us, mm-hmm. you know, we, like I was molested when I was two years old by a girl. She mm-hmm. was my babysitter and she, you know, she had me fondle her. And, you know, at two years old, like you can't even comprehend what's taking place. But I remember it. It was like my first memory. Yeah. And when I shared that with him, he like almost started crying and he's like, your, your innocence right. was, was like taken, mm-hmm. taken from you mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, shared other things that happened along my journey. And he's just like, he's like, Justin, you experienced trauma at such a young age, which then caused all these things in your adolescence and your teenage years, which for those of you guys that know my story and you've heard this podcast, like I was on drugs. I was an Mm -hmm. alcoholic. I was being arrested. I mean, I dropped out of school. I had so Mm -hmm. much trauma and dysfunction in, in my family. And, and then, and then Jesus showed up Yeah. and then I got saved and, and, and God began to heal me in these areas. But what was interesting was, was there still traces of trauma? Cause trauma just doesn't go away. Your experiences just don't go away. Yes. You can be healed and you can work through those things. But you know, even when I look at our marriage, you know, different ways that I would show up or how I'd respond or how I'd react, or maybe I felt like you were rejecting me or neglecting me or whatever. Mm -hmm. It would cause things that were kind of buried, you know, deep within to kind of show up. up. Yeah. And it's like, we all have different things, trauma experiences, whatever, Mm -hmm. but we all have the choice to choose. What are we going to do with those? Are we going to pursue? Like, if you know 
you struggle mentally, if you know you struggle with anger, if you know you struggle with this, that, or the other, mm-hmm. are you just going to carry that? Right. Or are you going to do something about it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to, yeah. Are you going to look out for, like reach out for help? Right. Yeah. And get help to clear it out, learn how to handle it. Yeah. I agree. It's, it's it, cause it, cause it affects everybody. Cause there's a lot of people even listening to the show mm-hmm. that have trauma and yeah. have been through a lot and have experienced hard times. And, you know, a lot of times that trauma and those experiences, if, if, if gone un, what's the word I'm looking for? Undealt with, untreated, mm-hmm. untreated get passed on. I think mm-hmm. that's a part of the generational mm-hmm. curse is, is, is if you are raised in an environment where you see X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. there's a good chance that you're going to do X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah. If you were parented a certain way and you were angry and abusive, or if you're, you, you were, your parents were angry and abusive to you, there is a good chance that you're going to parent the same, same way. way. Yeah. If you saw dysfunction we in your home. We only know what we're taught or what we see. Right. Same thing for our kids. They only see and learn from what they what, from us. Yeah. What were the examples? Yep. But we have a choice on how, do we want to continue cycles? Do we right. want to con- continue the curse or do we want to break it? Yeah, I broke the cycle of not having white bread in our family. <laughs> when we first got married, all I knew was white bread and white rice and pork chops. Like, but my mom... It's, she cooked it all the time. I love my mom. I loved everything. Like, hey, it was good. it was dinner for us. It was good. But like when I got when we got married, I was like, I'm not cooking white rice, and we're not having. Well, I have white rice once in a while, but with for like a um, a Filipino dish. But like white bread, <laughs> like Wonder Bread, we'd go to the Wonder Bread shop every week. My mom would get the the sweets and the white bread, like that one where like you start chewing for lunch and it gets stuck in the roof of your mouth. That was. <laughs> That was my lunch. We're it was talking great. about breaking generational but I'm just saying curses I, and cycles. And Joy goes, white bread. I broke the generation of Pork having, chops. buying white bread in my house when I got married. I'm like, I'm stopping that. We're going to have oat milk and almond milk. And yeah. it was hard for the older kids when we changed from like 2% milk to oat milk and almond milk. They were mad. They're like, we're not having no cereal. We're not having all this with this kind of milk. I guess I'm there's like, a lot of different cycles you can break. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. I just had to lighten up the story. No, that's good. No, I I mean, I mean, really, even healthy eating, like breaking the cycle of what you were grown to have growing up, what you had growing up. Like you probably had great. I mean, your mom's a great. Yeah, she makes all these great meatloaves, and oh man, she makes all kinds of good stuff. Something that some of my kids over there, I'm like, go have grandma's food. Ask her to make that dish. Yeah, no, bring some home. That's funny, but there are some good cycles that you brought. Like uh, the, I love Mexican food. Yeah, but I don't. I don't cook it. I love Filipino food. Mm-hmm. You make a lot of good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I taught Angelina how to make like adobo. She knows how to make pants and adobo and like those two dishes. Yeah. Uh, those are like the go to dishes. Those are go to. Mm-hmm. But, but you, yes, breaking yeah. different cycles. Breaking I mean, cycles yeah. and breaking curses. And I remember mm-hmm. when I used to post about, you know, breaking the generational curses, my dad used to get offended. And when I would post something, he was like, son, why are you, you know, you're talking about break, breaking generational curses and, you know, and he would take it personal. Yeah. Like he yeah. would take it personal. And, you know, we were at his house uh, a couple of weeks ago because mm-hmm. we celebrated Father's Day the, the next week because we were out of town at mm-hmm. the Glover U event. And my dad, and this was after Ed Milet. So now I'm like, like realizing my role in our, in our lineage of me changing the trajectory of where things go. And my dad in the kitchen, he said, son, I'm so proud of you. He yeah. said, he says, you're the one. And he didn't even hear the Ed Milet thing. He says, you're mm. the one to, you know, to change the trauma and yeah. dysfunction in our family yeah, so and, and mm. break the curse. Mm. And, and then he's like, and I studied it. Like, I guess after me posting it, like he studied what generational curses are. And he says, they're real. Mm. And he said, son, you're the one. Yeah. And what was, and which was awesome is because, you know, my dad experienced a lot of dysfunction and trauma. Oh, yeah, from, they, from they, yeah, they yeah from from, from, from his parents. upbringing. But what's awesome is by me being the one yes. and God changing me, I've had the opportunity to influence my dad. Yeah, he's walking, every, even like physically, he's walking every day, he does exercise every day. He's lost weight. He's doing way he's better. He's doing the 1% he better every day. He eats more salads and chickens. Like he's changed a lot. But we still just, enjoy some good ribs. I mean, your dad yeah, loves to grill. We're down. like, can we get some good ribs in your potato salad? But he's been, he's changed Best a lot. potato salad ever. But it, it's just... I see all that to say this, whether it's white, whether it's white bread or whether it's alcohol, 
like you can you can break the curse and you can change yeah. the trajectory of the of the family lineage. And so I want to mm. encourage you today if you're going through pain, if you're going through struggle, if you're going through heartache, if you've been through hell, you can be the one to say the buck stops here mm-hmm. and you can change the trajectory of how things go from this day forward. Amen. I'm I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Mm-hmm. We're 18 years in almost. Is it 18 years this December or 19 years? Yeah, 18 years this December. Oh, okay. We'll be married. Like We've been together 18 years, but we're breaking curses <laughs> together. Joy is my co-curse breaker. We're, 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 <laughs> we're, we're changing the white bread curses. Well, that, all was the, o- that was awkward. I mean, you kind of went All the other story. curses. But no, but honestly, though, um, be that in your family. Be the one who changes the direction yeah. of, of the way your family goes and and know that you're not alone you can reach out to joy and i anytime if you ever have any questions if we can ever support you encourage you we get so much awesome feedback from the show you know from so many of you that listen you know we're always here to help you and to encourage you you accountability accountability for working out or anything like contact me yeah joy's a runner she's she's working out she's doing great i'll make you send me something every day do it do it i push him she like, pushes me. I don't care how you feel. We're she going, pushes we're me out of bed run. <laughs> while she still sleeps. Get out of bed and go. And I'm like, you need to wake up too. <laughs> Guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode here. Again, you know, be the one. Go out and, and change the direction that, uh, that maybe things have gone. Um, but you can be the one that, that, that stops the dysfunction or anything in your life, your family's life, and you can create a new generation and a path forward for, for, for ki- your kids and, and for kids to come. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in to another episode. I want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is not just the sponsor of the show. This is our personal lender. This is who we uh, send all of our buyers to. They have over 600 five-star reviews, a perfect A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, and they are incredible. Very highly experienced, got over 100 years of combined loan experience. And guys, this is who you want to work with. So if you want to buy a home and you need to get pre-approved, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. If you need to refinance your home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. And if you're a real estate agent and you're looking for a great lending company, they're in over 23 states, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888 885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. I always want to leave you with two things. Number one, it's not how you start. What matters is how you finish. And number two, with God, all things are possible. God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one. 